So we're calling this uh, section 8.1, part 2, right? And this is where we're dealing with uh, complex rational expressions. So what does that mean? Well, complex means that it looks complicated, right? This is when you have a fraction, which is really a division problem, divided by another fraction, which is really a division problem. But it's as simple as this. If you know that when we divide by a fraction, you change it to multiplication and flip the second fraction, it's cake. All right? It's that simple. If you typed in on your calculator 4 divided by 1 fifth, hit equal, it's going to be the answer 20. Why? Because dividing by 1 fifth is really multiplying by 5 over 1. So 4 divided by 1 fifth is really 4 times 5. Right? Um, so with that concept, we're going to be able to simplify these guys very easily. You see, this is a fraction divided by a fraction. Now, it looks complicated. So why not um, write it horizontally instead of vertically? So I'm going to write it sideways instead of up and down. Check it out. There's my 3x minus 5, but instead of writing it uh, as a fraction like this, I'm going to write it with a division symbol like this, divided by. And divided by what? By the bottom one, which is 3 fifths. So I think this one looks uh, easier to do than the original. So now that we have a fraction divided by a fraction horizontally, we could change this division to multiplication. The first fraction comes down, and the second fraction gets flipped. And then now, at this point, there is no addition or subtraction, it's all multiplication. We could just cancel things out, like the 5 on the bottom with the 5 on the top, and also the 3 up here with the 3 down there and guess what what's your answer x, x. that's it you see it's easy very easy right of course it looks complicated right here at the start that's why it's called a complex rational expression it's fractions within a fraction right so it looks complicated but if you write it horizontally it becomes a lot easier of course it does get a little more challenging let's take a look at this guy so what we need to recognize is that here is the big division bar. So I really have the above fraction divided by the below fraction. So let's make it look nicer by writing it horizontally instead of vertically. So what I want to do is just write, uh, whoa, I'm sorry, I want to write this fraction divided by this fraction but sideways. There it is. So instead of writing it vertically, we're writing it horizontally. The top one, there it is divided by, there it is, the bottom one, there it is. Now after that, we're going to change the division to a multiplication down here. And of course, we're going to flip only the second fraction. So the x that was on the bottom is going to be on top. The minus 4 plus x that was on top is now going to be on the bottom. And that first fraction, we're just going to leave it exactly the same. x minus 4 over x. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we really do have a fraction times a fraction. Of course, you're supposed to try and factor anything possible, but nothing's factorable. So we could just start canceling. At least we could cancel out this x down here with this x up here. And now this looks like I could cancel it with this, but there is something I need to do. First of all, uh, let's write it in order with the x first and the number second. So let, let's take this positive x and write it first on the minus 4 and write it second. So I'm just going to rewrite it right below right here, x minus 4. Okay, so now it does look identical to it. So you have the x minus 4 up here, the x minus 4 down here, and I'm going to cancel it, the whole thing with the whole thing. So in this case, what's your final answer? Zero. Not 0, one. 1. There you go, 1. Why 1? Because when everything cancels out, your answer is 1. I mean, you guys, if you had 3 divided by 3, what happens with the 3s? They cancel out. What's the answer? 1, right? So whenever everything cancels out, the answer is 1. Right here, everything canceled out, so the answer is 1. Now, of course, we are going to have problems that have complicated answers, fractions with variables and stuff. Number 3, it gets more fun. Okay? So first, it's vertical. Go ahead and write it uh, horizontally. So there it is written horizontally. Notice I drew the division bar in red. That way you could see the red division sign right there. 
So it's the top one divided by the bottom one, top one divided by the bottom one. I didn't flip anything yet. The only time you flip is when you change the division to multiplication. And once again, it's very important that you only flip the second fraction. You don't mess with the first fraction, only flip the second fraction. Okay? So the first fraction, I'm just going to rewrite it down here. Now that second fraction, I am going to flip. The division does change to multiplication. And I'm going to flip the second fraction. So the 12 was on the bottom, now it's on top. The 6 minus x was on the top, now it's on the bottom. So we now have a multiplication of two fractions. Can we factor anything? Well, yeah, we could cancel out this uh, 6 and this 12. But even before that, how about we factor the difference of two squares here, the x squared minus 36, okay? So let me do this. I want to rewrite this first fraction. But instead of x squared minus 36, what am I going to write? x plus 6, x minus 6, or minus 6 plus 6, whatever you want. But that's the factor form of the above, right? And then we have the 6x on the bottom. We have the multiplication. We have 12 up here. And you know what? This guy right here is out of order. Let's write the letter first and the number second. However, the minus sign belongs to the x. So that's really a negative x with a positive 6. Are you with me? So, so far, we rewrote this horizontally. We changed the division to multiplication and flipped the fraction as we went down. And now we factored this. That's what we got. We switched this order. That's what we got. Um, right now, I could almost cancel. I'm thinking of canceling this with one of these guys, but notice that this is a negative x, and up here I have positive x's. So what I'm going to do is factor out a negative 1 I want to factor out a negative 1. So I want to pull out a negative 1 from the, from the denominator right here. And what would I have left if I pull out a negative 1? X. X minus 6. Okay? So, so far I just rewrote it, so I want to put a line through it. There it is, factored. Negative 1 on the outside, X minus 6 on the inside. And now I could really cancel out this entire binomial X minus 6. I could cancel that out with one of these, with this X minus 6. So these guys are going to cancel. Let me do that right now. X minus 6 cancels with X minus 6. Um, what else? Yeah, the uh, 6 right here could cancel out with the 12, and you'll have a 2 left over. If, you're, if that's not making sense, think about it. 12 over 6, that'll reduce down to 2. That's why there's a 2 left over up on top. So our final answer is what's left over. And... What's left over is going to be in the form of a fraction, obviously. What's left up on top? There's an x plus 6 and a 2. So I'm going to put the 2 first, and then I'm going to put the x plus 6. Yeah. So on the bottom, what do I have left over? I have this x and a negative 1. So I could put negative 1 times x, or I could put my x right here, and like I said, I could put a negative 1 times x if I wanted to on the bottom, or you know what I could do also? I could just put a negative sign in the front. So there's many acceptable answers here. You could put the negative sign in the front of the whole fraction. You could put the negative sign up on top. If you wanted to, you could put the negative sign on the bottom. I don't like, I usually don't like uh, leaving negative signs in the denominator. I either move them up to the top or put them in front of the, in the middle of the fraction in the front. Now, that's an acceptable answer. If you were to put the negative on the bottom, that's also correct. Even if you were to have distributed the 2 to both of them and wrote your answer as 2x plus 12 over x with the negative in front, that's also correct. But I would go with the, the factored form. I wouldn't, distribute it. I wouldn't distribute it back in. I would leave it in factored form. Let's take a look at the last one here, the most fun one of them all, okay? Um, let's first rewrite it horizontally. So there it is written horizontally. The top fraction, there it is. Div division bar, there it is. By the bottom fraction, there it is. Okay, so after that, we could focus in on this. 
and we're going to flip the second fraction only. So this first fraction, I'm just going to bring it down. Then the division becomes multiplication, and the second fraction gets flipped. So all I did was I flipped the second fraction, okay? Um, and now we have multiplication. Is there anything that I could factor? What? This guy right here? Absolutely. Do you guys remember that formula, though? It's that difference, yeah, the difference of two cubes. Difference of two cubes. So in case you forgot, the difference of two cubes formula is if you have a cube term and a cube term with the minus, you're going to write the same binomial without the cubes. So A minus B is the first binomial times A squared, B squared is in the front and in the back. And in the middle, it's going to be both A and B. And if you had a minus sign, which we did at the beginning, if you had a minus sign here, then this one has to be a plus. And the A squared will always be positive, and the B squared will always be positive. Okay, that's the difference of two cubes. So what we're going to do is move this to the side and apply, or maybe not move it to the side. Let me make it a little smaller here. So the numerator of the left fraction, I'm going to rewrite it as a binomial times a trinomial. Now the binomial is going to be a minus b, which is simply x minus 3 in the binomial. x, oh, that's ugly. Let me do that again. Here we go. Um, x minus 3, that's still ugly. Okay. Um, x minus 3, and the trinomial is going to be x squared, and then plus x times 3, which is 3x, and then plus b squared, which is plus 3 squared, which is plus 9. Do we understand how we got from here to here? That was, that was with this difference of two cubes formula, right? Binomial times a trinomial, that's how we got it. Okay, so let me get this out of the way. We already used that formula, we're done with it. We also, on the bottom, in the denominator of the first fraction, what could I factor? What could I pull out? An x. Okay, thank you. And what would be left if I pull out an x? x minus 3. Perfect. So we do have multiplication. We have another fraction over here. Um, this top quadratic trinomial, hopefully it could be factored. I think we can. So let's do the parentheses. We're going to have x, x. What times what is the c value, 9, that if I combine together gives me 6? What times what is 9 that if I add together gives me 6? Three. Plus 3 and plus 3, right? Plus 3, plus 3. Positive 3 times positive 3 is 9. If I add them together, it gives me 6. Now, the bottom one, technically, guys, that's already factored. That's x plus 3 to the third power. So if you want, you could write it three times. I'm not going to distribute. I'm not going to do it. I just wrote it three times so you could visually see it three times so you could cancel it out with with other x plus threes. So let's cancel out anything possible because it's all pure multiplication now after factoring. We could cancel out the x minus three up here with the x minus three down here. We could cancel out this x plus three with this x plus three and this x plus three with that x plus three. And could I factor this guy? The answer is no. Because when you're thinking what times what is nine that if I combine together is three, it doesn't work. So technically, we're done. All we need to do is write our correct answer. So what's left over up on top, we have the x squared plus 3x plus 9. And on the bottom, see, I don't need to put parentheses around it because there's nothing else to multiply it by. I could just leave it like that. But on the bottom, I do need the parentheses around the x plus 3 because I also have an x. So you're going to have an x, parentheses, x plus 3, close parenthesis. This is your final answer. You can't cancel out this x with that x. You can't do it because of the addition going on. That's it. So I think you guys should be ready to do those last three questions from yesterday's homework. And of course, we will be having all these types of questions on Friday's quiz.